All right, guys, I am so excited about this topic. It's one of my favorites. And let's talk about when people ghost you, don't answer you, you invited them, what the heck do you do? This is probably one of the top questions I get from our coaches. And for me, I like to think about my business like I would a family party or a birthday celebration or something I'm really excited about that I want a lot of people to come to, right? What do you do? For a family party, you don't just put a post on Facebook and expect your entire family to show up to bring gifts, to bring food, to coordinate, all that stuff, right? You probably send a formal invitation in the mail, especially if it's like your wedding or a bachelorette party. You send a formal invitation in the mail and what happens? Some people are overachievers and send that RSVP right back. They text you, they thank you. Um, and then others forget about the RSVP. Maybe they were traveling that week. Maybe they had their kids get sick and it got lost in the mail. Maybe their husband stuck it in their mail slot and they forgot about it. And what do you have to do? You have to follow up and personally message them and say, hey, I haven't heard from you about this RSVP. Just wanted to do our final head cut. Are you coming or are you not, right? You don't just say, well, oh my gosh, they hate me. They never answer me. Why haven't they responded? Like in the back of your head, that's probably annoying. But if it's your family party, like a kid's birthday party, you're coordinating. You're figuring out who's bringing what food. You are figuring out what time they should come. You are figuring out who can pick up the cake, right? There's this back and forth. I think of our business the same way, right? You're not personally offended if they can't come. You're not pissed off if they can't pick up the cake for you. You are just communicating, talking back and forth, figuring out how can I help you? How can you help me, right? So when I go into my inbox, number one, I have energy. So if you have to have a dance party, you better get up and put your favorite song on and trigger yourself. Just like when you drink your glow juice, it triggers your body to want to work out. I think the same thing about dance parties before I get in my inbox, because if you go into your inbox and you're like, uh, that person never answered me, they're ignoring me, they saw my message, guess what you're gonna bring? Bad energy. Um, the other thing I like to think about is, I have this friend, Meg, who I've been best friends with her since I was 13, and she is terrible terrible at answering text messages. I just know her. I'm the type of friend that I know by now after 18 years of friendship that I have to continually text her if I want to know something because she's just, she reads it and then she thinks she answers and she doesn't. I just know that about her. So you can't prejudge what's going on behind the scenes because especially if you're inviting, you might not know that person that well. So the last thing that I'm going to say is you have to be confident. I go into my inbox like, I'm going to do this with or without you. I believe in this. It has changed my life. This team has changed my life. These products have changed my life. These programs have changed my life. So I'm doing this with or without you. So I'm not emotionally attached to whether you say yes or no. I don't really care if you say yes or no because I'm still going to be doing this, right? So it's not that I don't care about the person. Obviously, we're in a people business, but I'm not emotionally attached to the outcome. I'm not pissed off if they don't answer or they don't fill out their share card. Yeah, I still get frustrated. I'm a human, but I care when they say yes, they sign up, they commit, they invest in themselves. Then my work begins to start caring about them, to start checking in on them, to start plugging them into the tools and being successful to get results that they're looking for. Um, but if they're not investing in me, then who cares if they don't answer an Instagram message? It's not that big a deal. So I wanted to go through um, some things I kind of highlighted with you guys, but just give them in clear steps. Number one, emotionally detach, which is very hard for women, but it's not about you. Again, you never know what's going on behind the scenes with someone. Maybe they had a family member pass away. Maybe they had a big job shift. Maybe they're moving and they don't share on social media like you do. So never assume anything and emotionally detach from the outcome. Number two, think about what time of year it is. Right now, this video, it's August. So I know if I'm talking to moms, they are stressed out about how their kids are going back to school. They're stressed out about getting enough supplies for them. They're stressed out about getting back into a routine. Maybe they had all summer, or if I'm working with teachers, they had all summer where they kind of just did sort of whatever they felt like it. And so that's a really tough time. So they are 5 million miles a minute squirrel brain. So 
this is a great reminder to you, it's okay to follow up, right? It's okay to reach back out and just say, hey, I'm thinking about you. If there's anything you need, let me know. Or hey, I hope you have a great week. Like being a solid friend is priceless in this business because most people won't do that. They'll just make it about them and say, oh, they hate me. They ghosted me. They blocked me. I suck. When it's actually really not about you whatsoever, it's just thinking about outside of you and being selfless and saying, okay, what else is going on in the world that might be hard for them? And that leads me to number three of, or part of this number two is what can you give to make their life better? So if you're working with moms, maybe you can start sharing a snack idea once a week. Maybe you can talk about your routine on your stories. You know, what can you give more of to serve the people that you want to help before they even say yes to a challenge group and invest? Because that builds trust, that builds likability, and they're going to come to you when it comes down to like, yes, I'm ready to commit. So think about what can you give more of, especially on your social media, um, to help them through that season of life. It's the same thing with like the holidays. You know people are over drinking, they're over indulging in sweets. So how can you give them quick tips and tricks to like trade an option out with nutrition or get up earlier? Or, you know, it's walking people through that who, what, where, when, why. And I think as coaches, we forget a lot of the times we just assume people know what we're doing, but they don't know how you're doing it unless you are showing them the steps all the freaking time. Consistently taking action, showing up, walking them through the details, right? Because you, you have to remember when you were a new challenger, you didn't know how to drink your glow juice. You didn't know how to make your Shakeology. You had to figure out what recipe worked for you. So the more you can address those things in a curious way that brings solutions to people, the more they're going to trust you and want to say, hey, yeah, I'm ready. The third thing is follow up and check in. It's kind of like my favorite stores online. You know, when you put something in your cart, but you want to think about it and then you forget, you put it in your cart, but then that, that um, store does a really great job and they send you a reminder email like, Hey, remember this is still in your cart. Like, let's get you started. Be that person. Um, I can't tell you how many people I have enrolled that said, thank you so much for never giving up on me. Thank you for checking in on me. Thank you for following up. It means a lot. So don't discredit that. And it's okay to ask somebody if they said, yes, I'm interested. You gave them info and then they never said anything back. Go back and say, hey, when's a good time to connect? I know you were really excited about this. Or always having that mindset that like, Monday, I'm going to start a new person every single week, right? If you have that in your mindset and you commit to it, I promise you'll make it happen. So that means every Friday, I'm doing a big follow-up Friday. Hey, I know last week that you were interested in my next group. I'm starting a new group of girls Monday. When's a good time to chat today to get you set up? Like, I'm so excited to get you started. Making that deadline is so, so important. Um, but don't harass them, right? I, I think we get in our heads of like, I don't want to be salesy or I don't want to be annoying. Well, freaking don't talk to them like you would your best friend. Maybe that's voice messaging instead of just copy pasting a message. That's so much more personal than just here's a big blob of words, a follow up, follow up, follow up. Um, go, think of them like maybe also you made a great drink recipe for the weekend and say, hey, I was thinking of you. I know you like cocktails. We wanted to pass along this recipe. That's a great follow-up without saying, hey, are you joining my group? Are you joining my group? Are you joining my group? Because again, it shows your, you care, you're a human, and you're a friend first. Um, people value that so much when you are solving their problems before they're even saying yes and committing to your group. And then the last thing is they're always watching you guys. So if you're frustrated about people not answering you, go on your stories and friggin' talk about it. Be bold. Guys, I know this time of year, it's just my brain's going a million miles a minute. I get it. I forget to check my messages, but I am checking in with all my girls today because I know you guys are excited to start my next group. We're kicking off a big group on Monday. So check your inbox today. I'm so excited to connect with you. Um, I know life gets busy for me too, but I am so excited about what this program can do for y'all. And I just can't wait to work for you, work with you. Um, and, and just know that they're always watching. So bust objections on your stories. Talk about how you felt about it. Most likely you're attracting people with the same skepticism, the same objections, same hesitations as you had. So how can you curiously take those objections and speak to them and 
and knock them down on your stories before you even get in the conversations. I don't really get money objections because people know the value of what I do because I show it on my stories every single day. I'm continually getting results. I'm continually showing other people that are getting results on our team. I'm continually making good energy and positive shout outs that people know when they're a part of our Glow family, it's gonna be fun. They're gonna be a part of a community. It's not just here's your workout, peace out and see you later. It's becoming a part of something bigger than yourself. But again, people don't know unless you tell them. So number one, it's not about you, emotionally detached. Number two, what time of year is it and how can you help serve them and bring solutions before they even say yes to your group. Number three, follow up and check in as a friend first. And number four, they're always watching you. So it's up to you to show them, are you going to be the coach that's wishy-washy and shows up one, once a week? Or are you going to be the coach that shows up every day, no matter what, because your heart is so big for helping people that you just can't shut up about it. You can't slow down. You can't stop. Those are the people that are going to come to which coach, right? They're going to come to the one that's consistent. That's always there for them. That's a positive light in their life because they want more of that in their life. So I hope this is helpful. Go freaking follow up, go be a friend first. And I promise you, it's not about you and no always means not right now. So keep doing your damn thing. And I promise you'll find your people.